Good morning. Welcome to today's episode of The Word. We are glad to have you with us this morning. Today we are going to talk about the purpose of worship. And yes, it's like I alluded to in Thursday's Random Thoughts video, the video as we talked about the third commandment, you shall honor the Sabbath day by keeping it holy and talking about our Sabbath rest as well as worshiping God. So yes, they're interconnected to one another. And so that's what we're going to talk about this morning, is our time of worship, and not only our time, but the object of our worship today. So stick around. We will be right back in today's episode of The Word. object of our worship, also known as the purpose of our worship. The object is very, very interesting for us. Why is that? Well, it's who we worship, and in some cases, what we worship. We'll get into that in just a couple of moments. Today, I want to focus our attention on Jesus's final um, rebuttal of Satan's temptation in Matthew chapter 4. Without giving it away, uh, it also has to do with worship. Grab your Bibles, turn to chapter 4 of the Gospel of Matthew, also known as the very first book of the New Testament, and turn to chapter 4, verses 8 through 10. We'll be right back on the flip side to read through it and comment on the word. We'll be right back. Do you have your Bibles open, whether they are electronic or paper? Excellent. Let's get started. Verse 8. Chapter 4. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to them, All these I give to you, if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Fascinating, as to borrow a word from Mr. Spock. No, it's, it's awesome because we now know not only the object of our worship, but we also know the purpose of our worship. Now, let me ask you this question. What do you worship? It's a legitimate question. What and or who do you worship? Well, for us as Christians, the obvious answer is, well, we worship God. We worship the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We worship the three in one and all those other wonderful statements that declare the who our object of our worship is. Okay, that's great. Fantastic just to let you know, and even you may also struggle with this if you answered with one of those statements. Um, what else is out there? Hmm. Well, I can tell you for a fact from a sports fanatic, and especially this time of year, there is this really ugly tendency to be Hero worshiping. Yes, go Browns. That is my team. Those are my players. Notice where my vocabulary is going. Hmm? 
No, they are not. They are men playing a child's game and getting paid for it. But regardless of that, that is an object of worship. Believe it or not, for a lot of people, and whether it's the Browns or the Cowboys or the Texans or whomever, you know, and, and, and college players and college teams the same way. I, I digress. Got to get back to point. What else do we worship? Focus our attention on. Well, there's activities that we believe and we think are necessary for the not only development of my child, but my focus. For example, how many places do you, mom and dad, have to go throughout the week just to cover the locations of where your kids are supposed to be for events that they're supposed to attend? Long-winded question for where are you and what are you worshiping? Mm, you know, it's, it's an excellent question. So I point these two out, and there are a gazillion more that could be, that have the potential to be the objects of worship. Now let's dive into our text for a moment. Satan has already been testing Jesus. First of all, Jesus was hungry. He had been out in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, hadn't had a lick of food. Satan goes, hey, Jesus, why don't you, ju why don't you get, make something to eat, like turn these stones into bread? Jesus comes back and he says, you know what, Satan, you shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from God. Hmm. Almost had him. So Satan takes Jesus up to the highest point of the temple, like the highest point of the sanctuary, for example, about three stories tall. And Satan goes, hey, Jesus, why don't you just jump off here? Because the Bible does say that uh, he will send the angels to serve, to serve you and to care for you, lest you strike your foot against the stone. You shall not put the Lord your God to the test, Jesus replies. And now the last one. All of this and the expanse of the entire world is right there in front of Jesus' eyes, standing on top of this mountain. All this, Satan says, I'll give you. I'll give it to you. If you will bow down to Worship me. Jesus has got to be laughing inside. He's going, yeah, right. This is like crazy. Seriously, you are asking me to worship you. You think you possess all of this? Nice try, kiddo. Nope. Get out of my face. Go away from me. Go get lost. You shall worship the Lord your God and him only, and only shall you serve him. So needless to say, Satan left him for the moment. But that's another part of the story. The point of the matter simply here is this. There is only one object of our worship. There is only one purpose for our worship, and that is to receive from God what God has given to us, to hear from God and to hear his word. Yes, he challenges us. Yes, he redirects us. Yes, he takes his law and shows us our sin so that he may show us our Savior in himself, in Jesus Christ, who died on the cross and gave up his body and shed his blood for us. Boom. That is the purpose of our worship, and to praise and to pray. He is the object, he is the purpose of what we do here at Faith and all other Christian churches on Sunday mornings, or some may have Sunday evenings, some may have Saturday nights. It makes no difference when. What makes the difference is who is the object of our worship. Why do we do it? to worship the Lord our God and serve 
him only. That should give you enough of a segue to stop by uh, this morning at Faith, uh, this morning at 1030 for our worship time. You can stop by in-house, live, in person, or you can stop by in-house, live streaming. Either one, but we'd be glad to see you. Just let us know you're with us uh, this morning. Give us a thumbs up. Thank you for uh, being here. Like us, comment. What do you think? What do you think? Who is the object of our worship, and, and what challenges does that face? We'll take a look at that. Um, we will see you later this morning. You guys have a great and wonderful day and the beginning of your wonderful week. We'll see you la later. Have a great Columbus Day. Bye-bye.